who that to the who that nation and welcome to the dome patrol podcast your podcast for d new orleans saints here on the kb radio network how are we doing everybody i am your host kevin reed and the nfl draft the 2024 nfl draft should i say and the picks are in for the new orleans saints and the who that nation going forward we have seven young new members to the who that nation and all of them were needs i am i am surprisingly happy with this draft for the most part i i'm not over the moon i'm not screaming super bowl <laughs> at the top of my lungs here but i'm happy with the picks that were picked in this year's draft because needs were addressed needs and if you were going into this draft uh, listing the biggest needs for the New Orleans Saints in no particular order, you would say offensive alignment. You would say wide receiver. You would say uh, uh, somebody in the secondary. And all of those positions were addressed. And I think the best at those positions, at the point of when the Saints were drafting, they got the best they can get out of this draft and I'm happy with it. You know, they didn't have to mortgage the future for the next three years to get what they particularly needed to move forward. Cause uh, here's my theory when it comes to the new Orleans saints. Yes, we had a lot of needs, but at the same time, the saints aren't a bad team talent wise. Now we we're missing some pieces like any other team in the NFL. Yeah. We're missing pieces there. Uh, to bring us to the next level, but not major, not not to the point where the Saints will be one six one and sixteen next season. I'm not going that far. You know, we're pretty good talent wise. You know, uh, in this off season, the Saints and my biggest my biggest uh, addressed need was the offensive line because it's telling, and it was telling last year during the season. You know, uh, we're missing a lot on that offensive line. Andrus Pete is no longer here, even though I have a feeling he might come back because nobody else has picked him up. Uh, but he's no, as it stands right now, he's not on the team. Ryan Ramchek is all but out, all but retired because of his injuries that he just can't shake off. And that's a huge blow to the New Orleans Saints offensive line being as though he's one of the best offensive linemen in all of football. And so that's something that you just can't, you know, plug and play. You know, you need to get something of some quality to actually replace what we're going to be missing there. Uh, as far as wide receiver, uh, Michael Thomas is, is no longer on the team, which is a possibility maybe he come back here. You know, because nobody has picked him up, which is kind of surprising to me. Nobody has signed Michael Thomas, you know, throughout this whole free agency period. Nobody. I don't even think he went in for a workout with anybody else. It's it's mind boggling to me. But I think uh, I don't think he's coming back, though, because he he burnt a lot of bridges (laughs) on the way out of New Orleans. But that's neat to hear. No, that. But that position needed to be addressed yes we have Chris Olave we have Shadid Shahid A.T. Perry yes we we have some pieces there but we can always improve in that arena we uh had a need at linebacker yes we have Demario Davis and Demario Davis is getting a little long in the tooth um still playing at a high quality still one of the best linebackers in the league but he can be a liability in pass coverage so you do need another linebacker to come in and uh, help in that area. We also have a need at defensive end. Speaking of long in the tooth, we uh, Cam Jordan. Cam Jordan uh, is getting up there. He's not as explosive as he once was, but we need a need there not only in his side but on the other side as well. Now, Carl Grandison did an excellent job last season. But there's no help there. You know, you have Peyton Turner who can't stay healthy. You have Isaac Forsky who they drafted a couple of years ago who is, he can't even get on the field. You know, it, it's just, 
is a big need at defensive end. Now, that was somewhat addressed in free agency with the acquisition of Chase Young, but Chase Young is coming in with a neck issue. He had surgery and whatnot. He should be ready for camp and all this here. That's good, but Chase Young is Chase Young. Chase Young is known for taking plays off. He is known for not being available for 16 games or 17 games. Uh, So that's somewhat of a liability. So that kind of needs to be addressed too. Even though that particular position wasn't addressed in this draft, which didn't bother me at all because (laughs) in, in recent history, Saints have whiffed in the draft when it came to defensive end. But that's neither here nor there. Let's get into the 2024 Saints NFL draft picks. And I these are sneaky good picks. I think all seven picks were good picks, solid picks, nothing that will, you know, set the world on fire, but I think will be very important moving forward in this organization uh the saints had one first round pick at number 14 offensive tackle out of oregon state taliese fuanga who is a six foot six 334 pound bohemian of a human being (laughs) that is a huge young man he is an offensive tackle who can also play guard and that's going to be poignant when the New Orleans Saints because t- they always put their offense alignment out of position anyway and so if he's able to play different positions on that offensive line that's nothing but a plus with his four years at Oregon State uh, Taliense only gave up one sack one in his whole uh, collegiate career that is great now I want to be excited for this I do. I want to be excited for this, but I was so excited for Trevor Penn, that pick. I was super excited for that. And I ultimately was let down as we all were in the who that nation. I, I don't think we're going to get that with Tallahense, but I'm thinking I'm saying his name, right? But I, I don't want to get my hopes up too, too high, but I, I think this is a real solid pick. For the New Orleans Saints, this guy is a monster going by what I read up on him about. But I think the Saints, I said earlier, the Saints didn't make any sexy picks. I think they did in the second round. I guess you can classify as a sexy pick. In the second round with the 41st pick in the draft, the Saints select cornerback out of Alabama, Kool-Aid McKenzie. And we're going to have fun with his name, (laughs) Kool-Aid. But I watched Kool-Aid. I watched him at Alabama, cornerback, real good, uh, real solid cornerback. He's 6'1", 145 pounds. Uh, He can play man. He can also play zone. Last year, he did what he did last year with a hurt foot. He's still dealing with that foot, which is kind of, par for the course when it comes to Saints draft picks, always getting somebody who's hurt. Uh, But uh, he did what he did with that foot last season. And the dude is all, I mean, in the SEC, that's the best place you can get defensive players because you're going up against uh, uh, juggernauts throughout the SEC. And, I mean, he went to Alabama. He, He learned under the great Nick Saban. So, uh, that is very encouraging, very, very encouraging. Uh, in three seasons at, at Alabama, Kool-Aid recorded 92 tackles, five stops for loss, two sacks, two interceptions, 25 pass defenses. Very, very durable cornerback. The only question I have is uh, how is this cornerback room going to look? You know, we already have Marshawn Lattimore. We already have uh, Alante Taylor. Paulson Adebo, how is all of this going to fit? You know, who whose spot is he coming after? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, how is this going to work? Who's going to play nickel? You know, uh, and so on and so forth. So I, I'm curious to see how 
um, Dennis Allen and um, Joe Woods put this defense together where all three of these dynamic cornerbacks can be on the field at the same time and not lose a step. And so, yes, that was your second overall pick in the Saints draft. Our third pick didn't come till the fifth round. The Saints did not have a third or fourth round pick this year, uh, but they had, I think, four fifth round picks, if I'm not mistaken, but we'll go through them. But in the fifth round, at number 150, the New Orleans Saints draft quarterback out of South Carolina, Spencer Rattler. Spencer Rattler is one of those quarterbacks whose name I heard throughout the uh, uh, football season, college football season last year. The problem was he didn't have an offensive line, so he, he was running for his life most of the season. But he is a pretty good quarterback. And a lot of draft analysts and a lot of NFL analysts have said if he was on a different team, if he went to a different school and played under a different program, he would have been a top 10 pick. Now, I respect that, but you can make that argument for everybody in the NFL or in college football, should I say. Uh, if they're on a different team, they would be better. Well, if I had a million dollars, I'll be rich. So that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't say much. But uh, Spencer Rattler, he's six feet tall. He's two hundred and eleven pounds. He spent two team, I mean, two seasons with the Gamecocks over there in South Carolina. After beginning his collegiate career at Oklahoma, he played in forty eight career games, posting a twenty eight and fourteen record in. 42 starts. He uh, completed 900 out of his 1,313 career passes. That's a 68.5% uh, completion percentage, I should say, for 10,807 yards with 77 touchdowns and 32 interceptions. He threw at least one touchdown pass in 32 of his 42 career starts. He finished his career in South Carolina fifth all-time in passing yardage with 6,212 yards. He also ranked first in Carolina history in career completion percentage, .675. Fifth in career completion, 523. And ninth in career touchdown passes with 37, despite playing only two seasons with the Gamecocks. So that is an accomplishment. You know, most of those records were broken by quarterbacks who played four years at that school. And he's ranked that high. We're talking all time. He's ranked that high after only two years. Now, does that mean he's going to come in and press Derek Carr for that starting job? No. And let's not forget that the Saints did just draft a quarterback last season with uh, Jake Hader. I don't know what. I don't know what this pick means, to be honest with you. It's a good pick if the Saints are looking for the future. You get what I'm saying? If they're looking for something uh, to build on in two, three years tops, you know, we'll have something there instead of what we went through after Drew Brees retired, you know, scrambling, trying to figure out what to do. We have something on the roster, in the room, in the building, that we can rely on. And so that's a smart move. It's the same thing Atlanta did. And I hate to bring up Atlanta and their accomplishments, but they actually did something smart. At the time, it seemed stupid when they draft Michael, uh, Michael Penix Jr. After they just gave uh, Kirk Cousins all that money. But actually, it was smart because Kirk Cousins the past couple of seasons has not stayed healthy. Uh Kirk Cousins is only there for maybe, what, two years tops? And then what? Because nine times out of ten, they won't be picking top ten. So it would make sense to get a top ten quarterback, even though we didn't need one at the time. Let's let's secure one right now. So I get the pick. I was mad at the pick, still mad at the pick. But if the Saints are in a slick-style way trying to do the same thing, fine. I'm with that. Plus, you know, I think if Derek Carr – doesn't get it together this year, there's going to be more calling for his head that he's already getting right now. 
And so uh, now will be the time to do it. So, yes, uh, I think it was a good pickup. I'm not mad at it at all. Spencer Rattler, now a New Orleans Saint. In the next pick for the New Orleans Saints, which was 20 picks later in the fifth round at number 170, the Saints addressed their wide receiver need with wide receiver out of uh, Pittsburgh, Bud Means. And Bud is a cool name as well. He is a six foot two, 222 pound wide receiver. Um, when he played for Pittsburgh, he started 10. Uh, 10 games last season at wide receiver. He won honorable mention in all ACC, uh, compiling 41 receptions for 721 yards. That's 17.6 average per catch and six touchdowns. Now, Bud uh, started his collegiate career at Tennessee, where he was teammates with Alante Taylor nonetheless. He also played two years at Louisiana Tech, and his last two seasons were at Pitt. Uh, his final season at Pitt, he played all 12 games. Uh, he started in 10 of them, as I said earlier, and could be a welcome addition to this wide receiver room. I think uh, any any help is good help. So we'll wait and see if Bud Means will make an impact for the New Orleans Saints in the upcoming season and the future as a whole. Five picks later in the fifth round at number 175, the Saints picked up a linebacker from Texas, Jalen Ford. Jalen Ford is six foot three, 242 pounds. He played all four of his college years at Texas. Um, he finished his career with 287 tackles. 141 of them were solo, including 27.5 stops for loss and added three sacks, six interceptions, 10 pass defenses, four forced fumbles, three fumble recoveries as a linebacker for the Texas Longhorns. Uh, this guy, I, I, I've seen him play. I, I, I'm proud to say that I witnessed this in, in live action, or at least on television. I, I was impressed by him when I saw him on television Happy to see him in the black and gold. I think he is a welcomed addition to this squad. I mentioned earlier how uh, Demario Davis, he, he can be a liability when it comes to the pass defense. Jalen Ford is is made for that. He, he is a really good cover linebacker, and that is one of the uh, uh, Achilles heels of this Saints defense so welcomed addition to the who that nation jalen ford sticking with the defense the saints in the sixth round decided to address their defensive tackle needs with pick number 199 the new orleans saints selected defensive tackle christian boyd from northern northern iowa and boyd is six foot two 320 pounds and he played six Yes, six seasons in Northern Iowa. He played in 49 games and recorded 149 tackles, 22.5 stops for loss, 10.5 sacks, five pass defenses, and two forced fumbles. This was also a D for the Saints to clog up that middle. Um, I like this pick. Just another head to uh, add to the rotation there. Um, good pick. Good pick from the New Orleans Saints. Uh, we move on to our final pick of the NFL draft. And in the seventh round with pick number 239, the New Orleans Saints select offensive tackle Joseph Ezram from Eastern Kentucky. And Joseph is six foot six, 320 pounds in five seasons at Eastern Kentucky. Joseph actually started his college career as a defense alignment. Uh, he, he started his first two years, uh, 2019 and 2020 at defensive line where he recorded 12 tackles in 19 games. And he converted to an offensive lineman in 2021, where he started 19 games at right tackle. And I'm going to tell you, I like that. 
And the reason I like that, with him having experience on a defensive line, that lets me know that he can kind of pick out some tendencies from what the defense alignment are doing, uh, trying to rush the quarterback or stop the run or whatever the case may be, and he can uh, neutralize it, you know, theoretically. I'm just throwing it out, <laughs> theoretically. But it, I think that's good, you know, if he knows what a defense alignment can do. And so, uh, also, solid pick. Solid pick. Not going to knock your socks off, but those are your picks for the New Orleans Saints in the 2024 NFL draft. Just to recap, in the first round, it picked number 14, Saints draft, offensive tackle, Tally Say for for Aga. I think I said his name right. In the second round with the ninth pick, uh, Saints draft cornerback, Kool-Aid McKinsey. In the fifth round at number 15, Saints drafted quarterback Spencer Rattler. Also in the fifth round with pick 35, Saints drafted right receiver Bud Means. Another fifth round pick at number 40, linebacker Jalen Ford. Sixth round pick number 23, defensive tackle Christian Boyd. And the final pick for the New Orleans Saints in the seventh round, offensive tackle Jose Ismram. I think I said his name right as well. But those are your picks. Uh, the Saints did make some uh, undrafted free agent um, signings as well. And here are the names for those undrafted free agents that the Saints picked up. From Oklahoma State, defensive end, Nathan Latou. Uh, from TCU, safety, Millard Bradford. From Ohio, wide receiver, Jermaine Jackson. Uh, from Minnesota, defensive tackle, Kyler Bre uh, Broad. Uh, from Vanderbilt, punter, Matthew Hayball. From Colorado State, tight end, Dylan Hoker. Uh, from Yale, oh, I relieve fella. Uh, wide receiver, Mason Tipton. From S <laughs> Slippery Rock. I never heard of this. This is a, this is a school. Somebody tell me, is this a real school? From Slippery Rock, wide receiver Kyle Sheets. Uh, from Boston College, guard Kyle Hargill. Uh, from Pittsburgh State, cornerback Rico Payton. From South Dakota State, linebacker Isaac Stahlberg. From Louisiana Lafayette, that's where my daughter go to school at. Maybe she know this fella. Running back Jacob Kibadi. Uh, from Tulane. Center, Sincere Hainsworth. I love that name. <laughs> I, I bet you that fella is serious. And from Nebraska, we have guard Nati Nale. Nale. I believe I'm saying his name right. But those are your new additions to the New Orleans Saints this NFL draft. I tell you what, this season or this offseason is getting out the way. We're already at May. We're a couple of days away from May, at least the time of this recording. And uh, before you know it, you have mini camp. And then the month after that, you have training camp. And then the month after that, you have preseason. And we're on to the regular seats. So no rest for the Reary. We are off and running. And uh, we need to get the ball rolling and get it rolling quickly because we are in uh, – we're in trouble as the Saints, you know, as an organization fan base. We we are in trouble because I look around, and I don't look far. I don't look at all 32 teams. I just look at the four in this division. And just in the South, we're in trouble because I'm looking at teams making moves. One in particular, our hated rivals, the, the Atlanta Falcons. They are making moves, man, and we're – it's like we're stagnant in ways, you know. We're not really – making any moves. I know we have money issues and uh, contract uh, locked in on deals that we shouldn't be locked in on in a lot of cases. But some of this, well, not some, let me take that back. Most of this is self-inflicted. Most of this is because of the Saints and Mickey Loom is holding on to players way too long, signing players who are past their prime and 
re-signing players who are past their prime because you're trying to hold on to them or show loyalty in some sense. And it's, it's coming back to haunt us and it's really biting us in the butt right now. And, you know, we need to really do an evaluation of this team. This was the year uh, going into this off season. This was the year to kind of blow up everything and kind of start from scratch, you know, go back to formula. And yeah, that would have set us back a couple of years, but we already set back, set back from what we haven't won a division in three years. So it's time to, (laughs) it's time to get the ball rolling on bringing in some fresh young people to help this team look good moving forward in the future. Saints are, uh, it seems like it just seems like they're in win now mode for the last couple of years. It is backfire and they put all their eggs in the baskets and, and the baskets then knocked out their hands. All the eggs are cracked and, and we're stuck. And now they playing, they're in this limbo here where they're trying to win now, but build for the future at the same time. And it's not working. So I need Mickey Loomis to get his head out of his behind and really look at this team and do what's right for this team, for this organization, for this fan base. You know how unique of a fan base the New Orleans Saints fans are? And this is me being one. You know, love this team through all the ups and downs and the the the, the pinnacle of winning the Super Bowl in 09 and wearing the bags on our heads back in the 80s and, you know, going through these uh, the Dicker errors and the Hazlitt errors and, you know, and all these errors. You can link uh, Dennis Allen with that, too. <laughs> these horrible errors in this franchise. They only experienced victory, true victory, one time. And, and still be loyal to a team that it feels like at times isn't loyal to us. It's hard, man. It is it is seriously hard. And at the end of last season, I really was I was dead serious that I was gonna end the Dawn Patrol podcast, that I wasn't gonna talk to all these things. But my heart, man, my heart won't let me. I had to stop myself when we signed Chase Young and we signed a couple of pieces in the uh free agency period. And I was gonna do a show about that. And I and I stopped myself. I said, no. I said I wasn't going to do no more. I'm not doing no more. And when the draft ended and I felt a little encouragement from the draft, I I drunk the Kool-Aid, no pun intended. (laughs) I drunk the Kool-Aid and I went on ahead and prepared this show. And it's no brainer. I knew it. And I think I said it when I recorded that episode uh, last season, at the end of the season, I'll be back. And I knew I was going to be back (laughs) because I love this team so much. But this is an encouraging draft. But we can bring in all the Hall of Famers out of Canton, Ohio. We can do whatever and put them in black and gold. It don't mean nothing if Dennis Allen is the head coach. I'm I'm still on that train. That that haven't went nowhere. Dennis Allen is a bad coach. He's not a good coach at all in no aspect. And so I still feel that we're not going to do anything this season. Um, I'm just going to have hope that we do we just don't go out there and embarrass ourselves like we did last year those were some embarrassing losses that we experienced last season just unbelievable and so that's that's my prayer (laughs) going into this season uh i wish these young crop of uh uh, new saints uh, all the luck in the world i pray they can contribute to this team in a successful way that we can taste some level of success that we have been deprived of for the past three seasons under Dennis Allen. And so we shall see, but I like to know what do you think of the picks? Did, are you happy with the picks? Do you think the Saints should have moved up and got uh, somebody else? I don't know. I know a lot of people were upset because the Saints didn't move up to get Jaden Daniels. That was never going to happen. Uh, Jaden Daniels could have failed to 14. And the Saints wouldn't have picked them. That, that wasn't going to happen. Saints picked the quarterback in the fifth round, and that's exactly what they were going to do. They were not going to pick a quarterback in the first round, especially Jaden Daniels. Uh, that I don't know why people were on that kick. 
I never believed that. I I remember when uh, Michael Pennis Jr. made the statement that he wanted to be a saint, and the world went crazy. Like, oh man, we're gonna get Michael Pennis Jr. He's never gonna fall to fourteen, and Atlanta knew that. That's why they picked him. <laughs> That's what they made sure he didn't fall to fourteen. Uh, but uh, I would like to know. Did you think the Saints made all the right moves uh, to improve this team for the future? Email the show, kbradiopodcast at gmail.com. You could also search for this show on all social media platforms. Just search for the KB Radio Network as well as the KB Radio Network channel on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Also, don't forget about the five stars, the reviews, and sharing this show. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you are currently listening to the Dome Patrol Podcast, your podcast for D New Orleans Saints here on the KB Radio Network. Everybody, thank you for joining me for this recap of the NFL Draft this season and looking over all of the picks, all of the undrafted free agents that the saints brought in oh boy football we're almost there we're almost there but until we get there you're gonna continue to hear me scream every single day who that